eyes shut. I was like, okay, but it's the only light source I have. This is a March wrap up, right? Not April. No, April is today. Hello, my name is Wade Watts. And everyone knows where they were and what they were doing when they heard about the contest. You're watching a reader's world. So today I'm going to be filming and you are going to be watching my March wrap up. I read like, I read about six books and I think that's fine. It's just the quality of some of them I just didn't like and some of them I was just bored with. But some of them were really, really good and we're gonna talk, be, be talking about them. So let's get started on the wrap up. The first two books I read for March was Orange 1 and 2 by, I would try to attempt the author's name but I couldn't because I'm sucky at pronouncing people's names. But this is actually a manga series that follows a young girl who gets letters from her future self and basically her future self is trying to help her stop the um, death of one of her uh, one of her classmates. Um, if you are planning to read this book, I give you trigger warnings for suicide and depression. I loved these mangas so much. The art style is absolutely beautiful. I feel like the mangas, what they do a really good job is, is present those issues of suicide and depression much better than a lot of mainstream books and movies and TV shows. <laughs> 13 Reasons Why. Not only heartwarming, but heartbreaking at the same time. And it's just, all the characters are really good and you're interested, every time you turn a page, you're interested in what's going on. And I, and I really loved it. The problem was with me is that since it is a manga, my library only has two of them and there's supposedly more. There's even one about this in the future after what happened in the first few books. But I kind of felt they ended it really well with those first two volumes. And if if I couldn't find any more of those mangas, I'm kind of fine with it. But I would still want to read more about these characters that I really, really like. If you ever want to get into a manga, I highly, highly recommend these. If anyone has any mangas like Orange for a person who is starting to read manga, please, please tell me in the comments below. I really want to read more manga. So the next book I read is actually a play. And it actually was for school. Uh, and that was Macbeth by William Shakespeare. Here's the thing with Macbeth. I actually really much enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot as in I felt it was very creative and smart and I really liked the subject matter of power and corruption of power. I mostly liked M M Macbeth because I was relating it to Heathers but anyway. Uh, if you don't know what Macbeth is about, it's about this dude named Macbeth and basically he's told, yo you're gonna be king one day? He tells his wife and his wife's like, if you're gonna be king one day, you gotta kill this king. So stuff and stuff happens and just... The thing that I kind of had a problem with is the characters. I feel like that's the problem with a lot of old plays and basically every William Shakespeare play. All the characters are just basically annoying and stupid. Not all of them are annoying and stupid, just one of them isn't. A Midsummer Night's Dream had the saving grace that is Puck. Romeo and Juliet had the saving grace of Benvolio and Mercutio. In Macbeth, they had the saving grace of no one. What I really, really did enjoy about this was like the creativeness, I guess. There, there's a thing that happens in the end of the book that basically shows off that there's more that happens and I really liked how Shakespeare did it well. I really liked the rhyming scream with like everyone being cursed or whether by the witches. Um, I just think the whole story of Macbeth is really interesting. It's just the characters that really, really bring it down. I just, I'm very character centric and if all the characters are stupid and annoying, I'm not gonna really like it. What really was the saving grace was the story. And I mean, do I still not like Shakespeare? Yes, I don't like how everyone praises him as this mastermind and this holy be being. I mean, he's just an old white guy who writes plays about people. I mean, sometimes I do give him credit, but yeah, that's really it. Um, so the next book I read was actually I audiobooked, and I'm really excited that I audiobooked it because I was really behind in the series by like one book. And that is The Dark Prophecy by Rick Riordan. I actually really enjoy the Trials of Apollo series. I enjoyed the first one, but I kind of lost hype in it because after I read Magnus Chase, I was like, why is everyone obsessing over Trials of Apollo when Magnus Chase is like right here? Because I freaking love Magnus Chase. But I feel like with the second book of Trials of Apollo, it's not amazing. I feel like it's better than the first one because I feel like what Rick Riordan is doing a fantastic job is is Apollo. The reason why everyone hates Apollo in the first book is because he's selfish but that's the whole point of his character. Like the whole point of the first the first series of Percy Jackson is that all the gods suck. They're all 
awful and they don't all they care about is themselves and then Apollo who we're reading from their point of view he's supposed to be that way and I feel like in Dark Prophecy Rick Riordan does a beautiful transition of showing his development from the selfish being and understanding human emotion and I feel like he's doing that a fantastic job I love what he's doing and other than that I feel like some of the plots are kind of iffy some of the characters are a little iffy I feel like the standouts especially in this book old hunters of Artemis that left and decided to go uh, elope together and I feel like that was really beautiful there's a quote where basically Apollo's like why did you give up my mortality and they're like it matters it matters how you're spending your life and I feel like that was a really beautiful quote and that I think that really affected Apollo and I really loved that I'm excited to see what happens in the series even though I'm still butthurt that he's writing more Trials of Apollo books than the Magnus Chase series but I, I'm excited to see where it goes so the next book I read was a book that I bought a while back, um, and that is Unhooked by Lisa Maxwell. Uh, Unhooked follows a girl by the name of Gwen, and her and her mom have been traveling around the world a lot because her mom is supposedly nuts, and her best friend Olivia decides to join them on this trip to London. Um, one night, Gwen is taken by these creatures, and so is Olivia, and they're taking to kind of Neverland, but really it's not, it's kind of more dark. If you wanted a Peter Pan retelling, with a main character named Gwen. I don't recommend this book. I highly, highly recommend the Neverland War series. That is 10 times better than this piece of crap. I was really excited for this. I wanted a Peter Pan retelling focusing on friendship. I love books like that. I love fantasy novels focusing on friendship because I feel like friendship is so important, especially in fantasy novels. Whole book, the two best friends are split apart. And I feel like we didn't get enough of the best friends in the beginning and what we got was two girls that were basically really boring and dull and stupid. I hated Gwen. I hated her so much. She was so annoying and stupid and... Uh, I think the reason why I gave it two stars was what was the redeeming quality of it was the dark world of Peter Pan. I felt that was really creative. Just everyone sucked in this book and the ending, especially from what I wanted from the friendship point of view, was it was awful. Ugh. I just wanted to throw up and throw the book against the wall. I really wish I did. So the last book I read for uh, March, which sadly is something for school, we had to read another play. And that is Oedipus Rex by some old white guy from Greece. Nothing new. Um, if you ever heard of the Oedipus Complex, where basically a man marries his mother, that's where it's from. Luckily, this play is very short. Do I think it's better than Macbeth? No. I feel like Macbeth is more smart. This is just about a rich dude that I really don't care about that marries his mom. Really, that's it. It's stupid. Like, I guess there was some writing that I did enjoy. It's just the characters. Like, Oedipus, we're supposed to feel sorry for him, but I really don't. He was a complete, like, asshole. Like, I don't care. I don't care. His wife, who's actually his mom, I don't care about her either. I don't care about his children. We never get to see his children. I really don't care. Now that I realize, I don't know why I gave it three stars. I should have given it two stars, really. I enjoyed reading it. It was just a waste of time. So yeah, this month wasn't as interesting as I wanted it to be. The main standouts here were Orange and Dark Prophecy, but what else I read were pretty crappy books, besides I guess Macbeth was okay, but that's it. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you like, comment, subscribe, comment below some, some books that you read this month. Did you read some good ones? Did you read some bad ones? Have you read some of these books that I read? And what were your opinions on them? See you later. Bye. Ah.